Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This time it's going to be about my last game of the WTC in October. Uh, we have a matchup, Dread Elves against Beast Herds, which I would say generally is a good matchup, but we will see what is happening in the game. Um, so, so far at the WTC, I was quite happy with my overall performance with a win against Vermin Swarm, um, a win against the Undying Dynasties against Orcs and Goblins, and a small loss against the Dwarven Olds. Um, but we will see what will happen in this game. We have my list, mostly two units of Temple Militants, supported by Chariots, an Effigy of Dread to make my opponent take all the fear tests in the world, Wizardmaster Navigation, um, and two Mist Leviathans. My opponent was playing Beast Herds with a Soothsayer on Shamanism, a beast lord uh, with a great weapon, uh, some equipment, and then a beast chieftain totem bearer, so he had some decent magic. And then two big blocks of wild horn herd, uh, a small unit with ambush, the longhorn herd with stubborn, obviously, uh, some razor tusks, scarlet coils, and three cyclopses. So Cyclops is generally I'm not that good for Dread Elves, um, but that is basically the only option that uh, Dread Elves is afraid of in Beast Herds. I think it's a match that is commonly regarded as quite a good matchup for Beast Her for uh, Dread Elves, and um, I would agree uh, because you strike first, you strike hard, um, and basically you strike too hard for Beast Herds to uh, to survive. So. We are playing Counter Thrust and King of the Hill. Um, yeah, this is uh, the deployment that we went for. I think at some point my opponent dropped for first turn. And then I counter deployed as such. Uh, so let's see, from left to right, just off the picture, I have my other Miss Leviathan barely within 8 inches of my militant with behind it the uh, Warlock Outcast, so that he cannot be targeted by any shooting, because I have quite a broad base with the Mist Leviathan. I turned it 45 degrees, so I have an even broader one, and then I could just fill in my Manticore behind, so that the Cyclopses couldn't see it. Two Raptor Chariots, two Hunting Chariots, the Beast Breakers to give the extra movement, uh, the Temple Militants, we are both playing for the same ruins for King of the Hill, Black Cloaks that are scouting. FG of Dread, out of line of sight, but giving the 24-inch bubble of, of uh, fear. Mislevite and Militants in a flanking position. These are the Flaming Standard ones, I believe, and these are the Swift Stride ones. Thunderpack and the Dreadlord also behind the Mislevite, and so that he cannot really be targeted the first turn of the game. So my opponent played first, and then it was my turn to shine. Uh, my opponent, he rearranged his lines a little bit and he mostly shot with the three Cyclopses onto the Temple Militants. Uh, long range and Miss Leviathan's presence meant that he had sixes to hit. He managed to hit once and he managed to take off eight or nine Militants, um, indicating that letting him shoot at my Militants is not the best thing in the world. <laughs> Uh, but then again, that is also the only way he can basically deal with militants. Um, so that is fair. In my turn sees me move up quite aggressively with my Mist Leviathan once again in the uh, way that basically my opponent has to deal with it in the next turn. If he deals with it by charging, then I will have a lot of counter charges. If he doesn't, I will have some free charges wherever I want uh, on the playing field. Uh, otherwise, I have my chariots lined up. I have my Manticore Warlock Outcast, I believe, just behind the chariot over here. Black Cloaks, they <laughs> actually got Savage Furied by my opponent. This is the first time I ever see anyone putting it really to practice, the theory of casting Savage Fury on opponents, seeing Chaff and then forcing them to charge. Um, and yeah, otherwise I just move up. Uh, my opponent has some charges here, so he could charge with the Cyclopses on, on one of these units. So I will have a stun and shoot with poison. This guy had a flank, I believe, so he could have done that. Um, but then he would have lost the Cyclops in, in any counter charge. Um, 
Longhorns could have charged through the terrain to meet my militants, which is not that ideal. Um, so otherwise, he could charge here with the blocks onto my uh, Misty. And the Thunder Pack. So the Thunder Pack was the only unit that I really gave a, a sort of decent charge against my, uh, or the, the, not the Thunder Pack, because my unit is the Thunder Pack, uh, the Razor Cores. So the Razor Cores could charge onto my Thunder Pack, and I was, when I positioned these, I was quite careful in their positioning being within 24 inches of my Effigy of Dread, and I was trying to make them be out of my opponent's uh, commanding presence. Because his general is over here, I believe. He has the uh, crown of autocracy, so if he wants to be within 15 inches of, of this point of the hill, more or less, he has to just charge in onto the missile item. If he doesn't charge in, he's going to have discipline 6 becoming discipline 5 because of fear. He will quite likely fail the test and he will have a 5 up to hit me. He will also not likely make his primal fury. I don't even think he has Primal Fury, uh, so that would be 8 times 3, 24 attacks, maybe some extra and, and maybe some stuff. Um, hitting on 5s in that case, winning on 3s, would be one dead model and maybe, maybe well, probably two wounds more, so maybe two dead models. Funny thing is that I will strike also still first with 8 attacks, hitting on 2+, plus, winning on 5+. plus. And then I will strike with still 8 attacks, maybe 12 attacks if I have uh, 3 models left with Hatred. So I will win that combat if he fails his fear check. Or at least that was my thinking. Um, and also in the grind, um, he needs his general to be alive to uh, to make something out of this. Uh, yeah, so what did my opponent... Oh, you, oh by the way, <laughs> I didn't mention so far... <laughs> You see that once Cyclops is missing, I did the very cheeky thing of casting Fate Judgment and just rolling a 6 on the amount of wounds. So uh, one of the Cyclops uh, just died, which was not really necessary in the game. And I felt kind of bad for my opponent, because he was playing it out quite nicely, I would say, just, just in the sense of how I would play against my list. Um, and I felt bad for him for just losing a Cyclops so early. I was intending to do like four or five wounds, hopefully. And then I rolled a six and I was like, oh, I, I didn't really mean to do this. <laughs> Here we have the most epic uh, picture that I could make this battle, I feel, uh, because my opponent did charge in with uh, both units at the same time onto my Missile Viton. I think my Missile Viton will not pull through. <laughs> So he has the Beast Lord here in contact, he has the BSB as well in contact, and he has a gazillion of Wild Horn. Um, so the Beast Lord did some wounds, the BSB did some wounds. My crew of my Mr. Phyton did two wounds back to the Beast Lord. Uh, so also this battle was just filled with just random bad luck moments for my opponent, I felt like. Treadolf's turn two. Yeah, this is a bit of a different picture than turn one, isn't it? Um, so yeah, he did go for the Razor Gore charge onto my Thunder Pack. My Thunder Pack did suffer two casualties, but they did hold strong. And yeah, from now on, he's probably going to fail his fear test because, well, everything here is just gone. So what happened? Uh, I had my unit here uh, that I had lined up to do a charge onto my opponent if he would not uh, reform in, in some kind of fantastic way. I had the other unit here ready to charge as well, and I had my Dread Prince also ready to charge. Um, what happened is that my opponent charged in onto my Mist Leviathan. Mist Leviathan was within 24 inches of my Effigy of Dread, and then um, my opponent had to make fear tests. He failed the one on the BSB unit, um, and the Effigy of Dread doesn't allow for any rerolls. So they were going to be shaken. If you go back to this picture, then you might realize that that is a problem. Uh, because if they are shaken, they cannot reform, post combat reform, or they cannot overrun, they cannot pursue, they cannot do anything of that kind. So that means that for my opponent's other unit, the only choice that she has is to face the other way, or to fully just overrun and, and just 
run over the field basically. This was not what he wanted. <laughs> uh, because as you can see in this previous picture, he completely opened up his flank to this unit over here. He opened up his front to the unit over here. Um, so basically the two units were standing like here and he just had to stay uh, because he couldn't really overrun because it would only move him closer to my lines. Um, which meant that I had some nice charges to do. Uh, so my militant unit charged in onto the flank of the general's unit. Uh, flank, front, I think it was the front even. Um, anyway, they, they charged in. My uh, raptor uh, rider charged in onto the other unit. And that meant that I had a combat that I could do first with the militants onto his general. I completely annihilated that unit with me doing 23 wounds onto the wild ones. My opponent didn't do enough wounds back onto me to make me lose my rank, so he wasn't going to be stat fast because I was, yeah, I was in his flank. Then I had a 4 inch overrun, 5 inch overrun into his next unit, which I made with swift stride. And I completely annihilated that unit as well in the same turn because my lord was in combat with the unit, so we also resolved that combat this turn. Honestly, I don't know if I... I think you can pursue a second time, right? Otherwise, I made a mistake there and I should have reformed here, but that... Yeah, then... <laughs> if you know, then uh, you can uh, tell me whether I cheated here or not. The Dreadlord did a reform, um, and on the, uh, on the left side, we... Oh yeah, we have the, less, the rest of the field uh, being played out. Um, practically, this game was over by now. Uh, so, this is one turn later. My opponent did manage to charge something. The he did charge a chariot and I didn't flee. Um, he annihilated the chariot and he overran. He also managed to kill a Mislevite and eventually... Um, but the Cyclopses at this point, they're all gone. My Thunder Pack pulled through against the Razor Cords, <laughs> which I found amazing because, well, my opponent kept failing the fear test, the Discipline fight. Um, but yeah, it, it, uh, it was uh, nice. <laughs> I don't know if it's, if it's statistically 100% uh, likely, but I didn't really mind my odds there. So for that, um, and then otherwise, yeah, we basically it's a game of mob up the remains. Um, I did still have a charge with my militants onto the wild ones over there, and basically I'm blocking in this unit with everything I have. I mean, I have still three turns left here. Um, so the next turn, I let him let him charge my beast breakers on a. 10 or something, and he made it, so good for him. Um, yeah, I'm just consolidating my forces, trying to snipe out my opponent's mage from the unit, and the last turn I just go in and we shake hands um, with it being a 20 0 to the Dread Elves. Yeah, so the Miss Leviathans in combination with Militants. It's, um, I really like it, um, this combination, this, this setup is, this is just killing, like you have, you miss Levites and that your opponent has to deal with, um, also this, this matchup is just great, because my opponent doesn't really have any threat to, to any of my units, you can take care of one unit, but then you have a horde of chariots that comes in, or you have a thunder pack still that, um, I mean, Razor Course is not the best target for a Thunder Pack, especially if I'm being charged, uh, because then I don't strike first. But um, yeah, this was definitely just also a matchup that was horrible for my opponent, and I really couldn't understand why they gave me this matchup in particular. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you then next time.